Stonewall Uprising, the fight for gay civil rights is a one to two player asymmetric adversarial deck building game with history from the gay civil rights movement. Players compete as Pride or the Man during the 60s, 70s, and 80s. As Pride, your goal is to lower the number of the Overton window, showing that what is politically acceptable has changed in society. As the man, your goal is to detain and demoralize 10 people represented by Pride's cards. The game also has a solo mode, which I covered near the end of this video. You could also choose to play a cooperative game against the man, as the game does deal with some difficult subjects like the AIDS deaths in the 1980s. Right now, let's take a look at the setup of the game. Keep in mind that this is a pre-production copy and some of the components have not yet been finalized. First, set up the player board in the middle of the play area between the two players. Place cubes on the starting spaces as denoted by an S for systemic support, public support, and individual support. Notice that the starting spots for systemic and public support are on the man side and only on individual support is it slightly on pride's side. Next, place these five deck then tokens on the following spots on the board. As each spot is passed, you will remove these from the game during play. Black AIDS death cube starts on the zero space. The Overton window cube should start on 30. Place the dice pool, law tokens, and S tokens off to the side in reach of all players. Decide who will play as pride and who will play as the man. Place pride's player sheet in front of them and find the 13 starting cards for pride's deck. These cards have the 60s marked in the upper right corner, and they do not have any letters to indicate their place in the market in the bottom left of the card. Shuffle these cards and place them on the spot marked deck. Pride will draw a starting hand of five cards. The man sets up in a similar manner, placing their player sheet down, shuffling their deck of 10 cards, and drawing five cards. Again, the starting deck has the 60s in the upper right hand corner, and no letter in a box in the lower left hand corner. Each player can leave their starting hand of five cards face down on their player mats as they set up their respective markets. Each market will be set up with 80s on the bottom, 70s in the middle, and 60s on the top. The cards go in their respective position relative to that letter in the lower left hand corner. This is shown on the market boards for each player. A cards go here in the lower left, B cards to the right. Above these go C cards on the left and D cards in the middle right. And finally, the E cards go in the top left and F cards go in the top right. Just make sure the deck hits are correct, with 60s on the top, 70s in the middle, and 80s on the bottom. After you've set up your markets, place the events tracker near both players. As you can see, this is not a final component. The final component also has a place for detaining and demoralizing. Leave room near this board for the event decks of the decades. Place the double-sided event trackers near the event tracker board. Place the event decks of the decades in your set-aside area with a pile for pride and the man for the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Each player picks up their hand of five cards that they previously drew. Pass the first player marker to the man who will take the first turn. Stonewall Uprising is played over a series of rounds. In each round, players take turns playing a single card from their hand until they are out of cards or they choose to fold. As players play cards, they move cubes on three different tracks, systemic support, public support, and individual support. When the cube reaches the end zone of a track, an effect is triggered and an event token is placed on the event track. When the event track is filled, the winning faction flips an event card from that decade. Each decade will result only in one event, and these cards never go into a player's deck or hand. In the 60s, there are only three event tokens. In the 70s and 80s, there are five event tokens. Play will proceed like this, with players taking turns to play a card or fold, resolving the event track when required, and then a market phase will happen at the end of each round. Let's talk some more about playing a card and resolving end zone effects. When you play a card, place it in the center of your play area, not in your discard. Move the corresponding cube of the icon in the top left of the card. Each card may have an image, a value, shown in the top left, a decade, shown in the top right, the name of the card, shown here, a card ability, and historical relevance, shown in italics at the bottom of the card. The deck of the card is shown on the back. Resolve any end zone effects that may have triggered. Once you have resolved these effects, reset the cube track back to the starting space for that track. The end zone effects for the man are detain a number of people equal to X, where X is the number shown in the pendant here. In public support, the man increases the Overton window by the number shown in the pendant here. 
With individual support, the man will demoralize or remove from the game a number of detained people equal to the number shown on the end zone space. Pride's end zone effects are In systemic support, undetain a number of people equal to the number you land on here. In public support, gain the corresponding die, immediately roll that die, and any dice already in your dice pool. You will always keep this result until you gain a new die. Place all your rolled dice here for your dice pool. With individual support, Pride moves the Overton window down by the number shown. When the number moves down, if it ever crosses one of those deck thin tokens from setup, the man will remove one card from their deck or discard pile. Then if they looked at the deck, the man will shuffle it before replacing it on their sheet. Additionally, that deck thin token is removed from the game to remind you that this is a one-time effect for each token. Finally, for each event triggered, place an appropriate token on the event track. For example, if Pride were to trigger an event, they will place a token of their type on the event track. Make sure you resolve any additional effects on the card. Here are some important effects. Detaining. The man will detain from Pride's discard first. Pride gets to choose the card detained. All cards represent people on Pride's side, even if the card itself is an abstract event. If Pride does not have a discard pile, the man detains from the top of Pride's deck at random. When Pride undetains, they get to pick and choose from detained people. They may place those people in Pride's discard. When the man demoralizes people, that many people are randomly moved from detained to demoralized. The final component for this game has an area for this, but these cards are effectively removed from the game. The man should remember they win by demoralizing 10 people. These cards cannot be saved by Pride. Retaliation dice are a special part of the dice pool. When used, these red D4s are placed on cards in the man's market. When that player purchases a card with one or more retaliation dice, those dice are rolled like normal and placed in the dice pool. There are only four retaliation dice. Law tokens change the way the three tracks work, and there is a reminder of what they do at the bottom of the main board. The effect of these tokens only triggers if the cube lands on these tokens, not if it passes the spaces. Once the effect is triggered, return it to the supply. Each of these tokens may be placed anywhere on the tracks. The S token is a way for the Pride player to move the starting position of the public opinion track. It cannot be placed on end zones, but it may be placed adjacent. If the players have played all their cards, or if they want to save cards to purchase them from the market, they may choose to fold. Whenever you still have cards in your hand, and the other player hasn't folded, you have the option to fold. Simply say you are folding, and you will not play any more cards that round, but you may still purchase during the market phase. Your opponent may continue to play cards until they run out or choose to fold at any time. Three things will happen when you fold. First, the folding player will choose one cube to push toward their opponent's side on a single track. The cube may never be pushed onto an end zone and therefore cause an event. If there is no legal space for a cube, this step does not happen. All cards played during the play phase are now doubled in value. This does not include the market case. For example, if my opponent folded and I had this two value public support card, I could play it as a value four, or I could retain it to purchase a value two card from my market. Finally, the non-folding player should remember that for each card they play, the player who folded first will get to draw an additional card at the beginning of the next round. The final components will have a marker to place here below these reminders so that you remember how many extra cards to draw. If your opponent already folded and you choose to fold, no additional steps are taken for folding. Also, if you play all of your cards, you didn't fold. No steps for folding will happen if you play all of your cards before your opponent. Check the event track. In the 60s, it is full with three event tokens. In the 70s and 80s, it is full with five event tokens. Whichever side, Pride or the Man, received the most event tokens will now shuffle that decade's events and draw one from their own pile. Pride has a radio on the back of their events. The Man has a newspaper symbol. These cards may have ongoing or immediate effects. After resolving the event, clear the event tokens from the tracker. You may return that decade's event card to the box. If you resolve the decade, you may also clear the decade cards from your market. If you just resolve the 60s event, clear all 60s cards shown in the upper right hand corner from the market. Proceed to the market phase. Players may buy cards in turn order. The cost of the cards is set by its position on the market board. If you only have one or two cards to buy with, Place your newly acquired cards on top of your deck. If you have three or more cards to buy cards with, your newly acquired cards will go in your discard pile. All cards are used in the play phase or in the market phase, and there is no banking of value. It's a use it or lose it. You may buy as many cards as you can afford. 
If there are any retaliation dice in the market, they retain their relative position when the decade updates. Each time the man buys a card from their market in the 80s, eight step tracker will go up by the number on the number of headstones on the card. This symbol corresponds to the AIDS death track. At the end of the round, all of the cards you played and revealed during the market phase enter your discard pile. Pass the first player token to the other player. Play will proceed like this with the play phase, events resolving, and market phase all while the occasional decade progresses. Pride wants to lower the Overton window sufficiently to have the dice currently in their pool exceed the value of the Overton window or roll higher than the Overton window. The public support track is the main way they will add dice to their pool. The man's goal is to detain and demoralize 10 people and thereby remove them from the game. This game deals with difficult subjects and the designer Taylor intended it to cause very visceral feelings. For some, the idea of playing as the man may be a lot and we have designed a solo deck to help deal with that issue. In order to play solo, you will set up like normal with the player playing as pride. The man is run by a solo deck of cards. Each of these cards has instructions for what to do in the decade that you are playing. Flip over the top card, find the correct decade, and do the man's action. The right side of the card shows one of three track symbols, systemic, public, or individual. This is used to show which track the bot will push when it folds. When the bot folds by revealing four hands, it will push this cube toward Pride. If you ever fold first, take those draw card tokens, place them on top of the bot's deck, and the bot will get to play that many extra cards before you begin play the next round. When the bot over demoralizes or demoralizes extra cards, those are just shifted to detain. The bot has three additional win conditions which are shown on certain cards in this deck. Play will proceed as normal, including doubling the action value of all actions, including text of the bot if pride folds first. If the bot gets to deck then, it will always choose to remove the lowest value starting card from their deck, then their discard. You have just learned the basics of how to play Stonewall Uprising, fight for gay civil rights. Please let me know if you have any questions about the game, and I'll do my best to answer them. This video is sponsored by the publisher Catastrophe Games, and like I said before, these are pre-production components the final components will be slightly different. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy gaming.